Good evening, everybody. Thank you for being here. We will try to go quickly. Somebody said there's a game on? Is it hockey? <laughs> Maybe hockey? It was cooler than ever. <laughs> it is. Absolutely. Okay, before we begin our regular items, we start with a public hearing on the budget and truth and taxation. Ms. Purcell, please. Good evening, Dr. Sprout. President Berrigan, board members, guests. Tonight I will be presenting information on our budget and truth and taxation for the new fiscal year. Okay, our fiscal year 21-22 budget was proposed at our regular meeting on June 10th. Our proposed budget and public hearing were posted on ADE's website and are accessible via a link on our district's website. We are required to hold a public meeting to adopt a budget by July 15th each year. This is, an, this is an unusual year since the legislature and the governor adopted the state budget on June 30th. We expect to make a revision based upon the final budget by September 15th, and we will propose this to you on September 7th. Our total m and budget is estimated to be just over $52 million. Our capital budget, almost 20 million, and our federal projects, about 16.7 million. The bulk <laughs> of the federal projects is from the elementary and secondary school emergency relief fund. Given our pre-pandemic growth pattern, the current progress of our home construction here in Levine, and the recapture of students lost during the pandemic, we included a growth factor of about 400 students. That may be optimistic, but we will continue to monitor all of the upcoming developments and provide potential fiscal impacts on the budget. Okay, I will now briefly explain our revenue changes. We used a projected growth again for 400 students, which generated about $1.7 million. We anticipated recovery in SPED students lost during the pandemic and are estimating an additional $722,000 in revenue as a result of this uh, recovery. Our base support level will increase by about 1.21% per pupil for inflation. This is an additional increase of about $52.75 per pupil for a total of $418,000. Another factor is the governor's teacher compensation increase. Last year, this increase was provided in the classroom site fund. This year, the amount was transferred over to the base funding in the amount of $33.23 per pupil, or about $263,000. This does not include overall, an increase in overall revenues, but switches which funds receives the revenue. The legislature also increased specific special education weights, which resulted in an increase of about $345,000. When the Joint Legislative Budget Committee made its estimate for the 2021 fiscal year, the state was just, just shutting down due to the pandemic. They projected a large loss of sales tax revenue, which is the primary driver of this fund. Sales tax actually increased during this year, which gave this fund a large one-time payment. Because of this one-time payment, we will not use these revenues for ongoing expenses. As you can see uh, in this graph, revenues <coughs> were at an all-time low at 120 dollars per people back in fiscal year 12. The good news is the per student amount has been on an upward trend and we will reach a record high of $733 per student in 21-22. As previously mentioned, $192 of this amount is to be considered one-time revenues. Even though the mileage rate for fiscal year 21-22 increased from $2.74 to $2.77, the total revenue the district will receive for transportation will remain the same. There are two elements that generate our revenue for transportation. 
One is the transportation revenue control limit and the other is the transportation support level. Due to the dramatic decrease in miles driven, our transportation support level dropped dramatically. The statute governing the transportation formula does not allow transportation revenue control limit to ever decrease. As you can see on line one, the amount of 1037360 stayed the same as last year. This is the amount that can go up but never down. The transportation support level on line two is based on miles driven and the mileage rate, as I mentioned on the last slide. The difference between the two, the $897,000, would be put on the primary tax rate and paid with local taxes. The overall amount of money we receive will stay the same. The starting salary for teachers is now $49,741,000. This is an increase of 30.9% since fiscal year 14-15. And teachers' performance pay will remain the same at $3,680. This means first-year teachers can make over $50,000 a year. <clears throat> Our overrides are calculated on the base level amount since this amount has decreased, our overrides do as well. Our M&O override will decrease this year by about $10,000, and our capital override will decrease about $8,000. Um, capital override, also known as a district additional assistance. Our capital override was renewed in November 2018, and our M&O override was renewed in November 2020. For years, school districts have had their capital funds reduced by the state to help balance the state budget. Levine's cumulative total reduction since 2010 is over $18 million. This year is the first year the state did not cut funding. The Truth in Taxation Notice was published in the Arizona Republic on June 23rd. The tax levy amount for adjacent ways is $300,000. The truth in taxation notice is very confusing to taxpayers. It indicates a tax rate increase of $11.22 for a home valued at $100,000. However, this is actually a decrease of the prior year's overall tax uh, of about $0.71 cents per $100,000. This discrepancy results from a statutory formula that assumes there are no taxes in the previous year. Our tax levy for adjacent ways will stay the same, will stay the same amount in last year, although the rate decreased. This is due to the increase in property value. The purpose of this $300,000 adjacent ways levy is to fund the off-site elements of school projects. This could be, uh, this could include streets, sewers, curbs, sidewalks, fire and bus lanes, and utility lines. So the projected primary tax rate increased slightly. This is due to the decrease in transportation support level, the less miles driven last year, that I mentioned earlier. Had this not decreased, our primary rate would have gone down, down by 0 0.047. The primary assessed valuation increased by 6.3%. The change to our secondary rate is tied to our voter approved bonds and overrides and the increase in assessed valuations. And this concludes my presentation. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mrs. Purcell. Any questions? Audience, you can nope. ask questions this time. <laughs> burning, nothing burning. Do you have a question? Thank you. Oh, Thank yeah, you. absolutely. A really important question for the board. Okay. Um, who's going to win the game tonight? The Suns, obviously. There it is. Yay! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I love no, it. And then before we start the fall, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Okay, we will now begin with roll call. Uh, Mrs. Barron. Here. Mrs. Byrne. Present. Ms. Anderson. Present. Okay, and please stand and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a moment of silence. 
I pledge allegiance to the flag to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We need to approve the agenda. Do I have a motion? Motion. Motion. Second. It's been motioned and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Oops, I scrolled too far. Okay. We need to approve the minutes from the June 10th board meeting. I'll make the motion. Second. It's been motioned and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah. And Dr. Sprout, you have a bit of a report for us yeah. tonight, I think. Thank you, President Berrigan and governing board members. Uh, we will note that uh, Dr. Just for the record, that Dr. Centers and Dr. Watkins are not here. I don't know if we call their names or not, but yes. we will move forward uh, with the superintendent's update. Summer school has successfully successfully ended with all school sites hosting the five-week program Monday through Thursday. Just over 1,000 incoming first through eighth grade students attended. Our instructional focus was to build number sense using the McGraw-Hill Number Worlds Intervention Program in grades one through eight. This hands-on math intervention program is really fun to watch, first of all, I will say that. Mm -hmm. And it's leveled and allowed our teachers to differentiate to meet each student's individual needs, mm -hmm. resulting in 13% growth in district-wide uh, district from the pre-assessment to the post-assessment. Our incoming first through third graders received reading interventions using the Spalding method to increase students' early reading skills. District-wide students grew 15% in oral reading fluency, a set on their assessment from the pre to the post. Summer site planning. So we have a little bit of lag, so uh, <laughs> that's okay. I'll keep trucking. <laughs> Levine schools have been digging in, we've been digging into our data and refining plans to close learning gaps as we begin the 21-22 school year. School administrators have brought in teacher leaders over the summer to get a jump start on collaborative planning for the 21-22 school year. Schools are focused on strategically planning lessons and incorporate the use of real-time assessments to identify and teach the necessary sub-skills students need to be successful on grade level standards. Schools are also looking at their instructional approaches, approaches in order to accelerate learning for all students. Childhood immunizations. The district hosted a childhood vaccine clinic in partnership with Maricopa County Department of Public Health. All childhood vaccines, as well as COVID-19 vaccines for individuals 12 plus, uh, 12 years older or older, 12 years or older uh, were available. Approximately 40 students received a childhood vaccine and about 39 students and adults received the COVID-19 vaccine. A second clinic will be offered on July 22nd. Rogers Ranch hosted a basketball clinic on June 5th in partnership with Positive Image Sports and the Maricopa County NAACP. 100 Rogers Ranch students in grades five through eight were invited to attend the clinic. Following a 90 minute socially distanced basketball clinic, the students participated in a workshop facilitated by Project HEAL, and HEAL stands for Healing and Enriching African American Lives. We are saddened to, anou we are saddened to announce the passing of a student and staff member. Trailside Point first grade student Lily Naranjo passed away last month. She was deeply loved by her mother, father, brothers, and sister, and I believe they are watching tonight. Lily was described by her mother as someone who loved to dance and was sassy and brave. Her teachers stated that she was sweet, polite, and eager to please, and she was loved by her classmates. She impressed her teachers with her ability to learn in the most challenging of times, including learning Braille and how to use a Braille writer. 
Lily attended in-person instruction at Charles Sack Point Performing Arts Academy for kindergarten, and last year attended school remotely as she was receiving chemotherapy. When she participated in live remote lessons, she was excited to be with her classmates and they felt the same about her. Lily had been sick for much of her life. She was diagnosed at, as a one-year-old with malignant brain cancer and was so strong through several surgeries and rounds of chemotherapy. We, accept, we extend our deepest condolences to Lily's parents, siblings, and the family and family in the loss of this magnificent young lady who was a fierce fighter, and to the Trailside Point team and community as well. Cheatham School Counselor Richard Shaw passed away over the weekend after a short battle with cancer. Mr. Shaw has served at Cheatham for two years. He was best known for his all they need is love approach to working with students and he also took great care of staff. He was kind of their counselor as well. As an example, he had a mentoring relationship with staff who worked with special needs students so that they could provide the highest level of support to their students. He was known for swooping in in the midst of difficult situations, diffusing them, and working towards a solution. He was always at the right place at the right time, and that was not by accident. That's how intentional he was in doing his job. He actually worked until the last day of school, and even in his final days, was inquiring about how the summer was going at Cheetah. We will greatly miss Richard and extend our deepest condolences to his wife, Emma, their family, and the Cheatham staff, students, and community in the loss of this hero. I would ask that the board and our audience observe a moment of silence in honor of Lily and Mr. Shaw. Thank you, President Greg. Thank you. Thank you for your report tonight and for those comments about Lily and Richard and um, our condolences are extended to their families. So. Okay, I think, uh, Kathy, are you coming up to introduce a new friend to us? Yeah, <laughs> I am. Uh, tonight we are going to give an update on ESSER 3, but I thought this would be a great opportunity for our new uh, Director of Federal Grants to share some information with you. So Nancy Ramirez. New to the position, not new to the district. Yeah. <laughs> She's been in it for like six days now. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> I'm an expert. <laughs> uh, good evening, President Berrigan, members of the board, Dr. Sprout, and guests. And thank you, Kathy, for that, uh, uh, that introduction. Uh, I'm here tonight to just give you guys an update on the new Education Relief Fund, ESSER 3. So ESSER 3 is part of the American Rescue Plan Act that was enacted into law on March of 2021 this year. Um, under this fund, the Levine School District is going to re be receiving about uh, $10 million. <coughs> and ESSER 3, just like its predecessors, is highly flexible. So this money, we, um, it is really designed to address local recovery efforts as they relate to COVID-19. Um, and it, is, it can be used for anywhere in the um, LEA, so anywhere in the district, with any of our schools, all of our staff, all of our students. But um, there are some new requirements with ESSER 3. The good news is that a lot of these new requirements we have already been doing. So although they're new requirements, they're not gonna be hard to complete. So the new requirement is uh, to seek stakeholder input. Another one is to create a safe return to in-person instruction plan. And the last one is to set aside at least 20% of the allocation uh, to address learning loss. So we're gonna go into detail about what these mean. So for stakeholder input, like I mentioned, uh, we have been doing some of this. Some of the work has been through committee work. Um, we had the COVID safety committee that was led by Mr. Thomas. And this committee really focused on how we are going to get our students back and our staff back for safe in-person instruction. 
And then the Learning Recovery Committee uh, was also led by Ms. Davis, and then that Learning Recovery Committee really focused on what uh, practices we needed to do, what we needed to implement in order to address our learning, learning loss. And then um, as part of the stakeholder input, we are going to be pushing out a parent survey next week in order to really get some parent input regarding what parents feel <coughs> is the best or what they think that their children need in order to ensure a safe return to in-person learning. And then we will also continue to consult with key stakeholder groups as we are developing our SR plan. The second requirement is the safe return to in-person instruction. So for this requirement, ADE uh, did create a template and this is what this template looks like. I'm sorry, am I going really fast? No, you're perfect. <laughs> it's not populating. Oh. <laughs> um, so the, uh, the ADE's template is uh, what you see here, if you're in the room on the screen. So on here, you have to indicate uh, how we as a district are going to maintain the health and safety of not only our students, but also our staff. And um, the good news is, again, we have to do have the family handbook for in-person instruction and the staff handbook, and a lot of these things have already been addressed. But using the um, input that we are going to be receiving from our stakeholders and our parents, uh, we will continue to revise, revise this as we um, put this all into this plan. Some of the other questions are how the ELA will ensure continuity of services with student needs, um, both academic and social and emotional needs. And then also how the district is going to be reaching out to our uh, stakeholders and obtaining input every six, at least every six months while we have this fund. So all of this will be completed after we get some of our stakeholder input and then it will be made, made public on our website no later than August 2nd, which was our first day of school. So then um, the last requirement is under the 20% set aside for addressing learning loss. So um, again, that is not gonna be hard to meet the 20%. Um, I think we are actually gonna be able to well surpass that uh, minimum requirement. Some of the things that fall under this set aside uh, are things like summer school. So we were just talking about how we had a thousand students attend our summer school before and after school tutoring, our class size reduction teachers, our certified tutors that we have at all of our schools now. So these are just examples of things that fit this requirement as well. So what are our next steps? So our next steps, we're really gonna uh, work on the ESSER 3 plan and uh, putting those requirements together. We're gonna push out again that survey next week. Uh, we're gonna continue to collaborate with key stakeholders and really um, use that information that we're getting from, from our stakeholders and our, uh, our parents, our parents are stakeholders too, in order to go ahead and um, initially allocate the funds. And then once that plan is complete, we, that plan will be made public on our website. And then we will continue to update that every six months and uh, ask our stakeholders for input. Um, but until then, we're going to ensure a safe return to in-person instruction starting on August 2nd. And that concludes my presentation. If you guys have any questions or comments. Very good, I appreciate the information. Very well done. Very well done after Thank six you. days on the job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on. I don't think we have call to the public, correct? Okay. Consent agenda. Do I have a motion to approve? <clears throat> motion to approve. And I'll second, second. it. Motion. Okay. You can have Michelle second that. It's been motion and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And then we have the, oh, do you want to? Yes. yes. We have a, an announcement. Yeah. Uh, board, I would like to introduce you to our newest administrator in the district, our uh, data an analyst coordinator, Catherine Crary. So welcome, Catherine. <laughs> uh, Kathy put Catherine through the paces to, for this oh. job. And so uh, we're very uh, thankful to have you on our team. That's a tough position to fill. And so thank you for joining us. And you'll also get some great mentorship from yeah. uh, our director of federal programs <laughs> as you, uh, or grants as you uh, take on this job. So it's great to have you. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we need to adopt the 21-22 budget. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Motion second. and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 
Motion carries. Uh, we have the classified employee referral incentive. I think this is fabulous. I hope we get some payback from this. I think we will. <laughs> Gotta try something, right? <laughs> Do you want me to just motion or did you want to talk about it? No, I think. Go ahead and motion. motion. Yeah. <laughs> uh, second. It's been motioned and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And then we have the revised classified uh, salary schedule regarding the bus drivers and the salary comparison. Motion. Motion and I Second. Will okay, motion and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And then the change in pay for bus drivers and bus driver trainers. Motion. Motion. Okay, second. It's been motion and seconded. All those in favor? Mm -hmm. Aye. Aye. Any comments from the board? No. <laughs> <laughs> She has a badminton match she wants to watch. <laughs> any, any comments, Michelle? No comment. Okay, I'll just say thank you everybody as always. Enjoy the game. Yeah. Uh, our next meeting is on August 12th. School will have been in for a week and some couple of few days. That is very hard to believe. Um, so rest up, because they'll be back soon. Okay, motion to adjourn, please. Motion. Second. second, motion and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Good night. Okay, so everything.